explain today's program. Kobus is a musical instrument of shamans. Its sound fascinates the audience. What is the secret of its production? Tatiana Pirvalova's boudoir dolls. Saukile is a bride's headdress, what it looked like before, and why do modern girls choose it today? The range of Kazakh national instruments is diverse, both in the ensemble and in single performance. They sound fascinating. One of the most ancient instruments is considered to be kovas. According to the legend, it was created by a great baksa and narrator of the steppe, Gorketata, who lived in the 8th-10th centuries. The preservation of folk ideas about the role of Gorkut as a wise man and philosopher who contributed to the miracle of human culture, music and the musical instrument is invaluable. Kobus is an instrument of an amazing shape and an extraordinary richness of timber. Today we will talk about the most ancient, magical, mysterious and sacred instrument. I mean, I will now show the technology of making kolkobas. To do this, I took a dried maple trunk. You can use elm tree and pine. First, it's necessary to clean the excess wood with a sharp axe and level the surface. Now this wood needs to be carved out to get a smooth surface. The process of creating an instrument is very hard and requires a lot of skills from the master because correct observance of proportions leads to a wonderful sound. Please note that kobus is made from a single piece of wood. The average length of it is from 60 to 73 centimeters. The wood is ready and then we draw the template of the body of the future kobus. The pattern of the kolkobas is drawn and the next step I'm going to cut up the shape. To get close to the body of the kobas, it's necessary to cut out the excess wood with a saw and clean out the remains. The double form of the kobus is ready. We begin to process the back side. Then the neck is made. The base of the inner and lower parts will be processed. Next, I will work on drawing the top of the kobus. For this, I will need to draw a sketch. Working with a rounded chisel, the craftsman carves out the cavity. The first difficulty is to make a correct, bucket-shaped top. It's extremely important to maintain the thickness, an error of even one millimeter can lead to unpleasant changes in the sound of the instrument. You can do it without accuracy and excitement. After the inside of the kobus has been cut, it's necessary to grind it and align the surface. When the body finds its familiar lines, the master drills a hole for the tuning pegs on which the strings are attached. After that, the entire instrument is carefully polished, decorated with ornaments, which can be carved or patterned with a stencil. Then the kobus undergoes varnishing. After drying of the varnish, the lower part of the kobus, the string plate, is covered with goat skin. Here a tiyek will be installed, that is, a stand. The step-by-step -step assembly of the kobus looks like this. Turning packs are made, ornament is made, the ornament is assembled from bone. Also, the string plate is covered with goat skin or camel skin from the handbag part. 
One of the significant parts of the kobus is a string board made of leather. Together with a stand and strings, they create a velvety sound. On the inside of the kobus's body, and on the white head, metal plates or bells were hung, which created a special background during the performance. Our kobus is almost ready. We arrived on the stage of tightening the strings. During string stretching, 75 horsehair is put on one side and 60 on the other. One part of the strings should be thicker, so a thick and rich timber is transmitted. Now I'm going to put the strings together, and for this purpose I use horse hair from the tail. They're washed, combed, and bundled up. The strings for the kobus are ready, the only thing left is to tighten them on kobus. Before placing the strings, it's necessary to pass them through the snare head. Then everything is fixed using a button and pulled along the entire length to the turning packs, where they are fastened with a strong thread. A special roll is given to the stand. Without it, the sound will be clamped and dull. It's noteworthy that when playing the kobus, the performer doesn't press the strings to the neck, but touches it with nails or finger pads. The bow, being an integral part of the instrument, has an arched shape and resembles a bow. The intensity of partial tones and overtones depends on the force of the bow's touch. The bow also consists of 40 horsehair and a wooden base. Kolkhobus for Kazakhs is a symbol of ethnic history, the most magical folk instrument. Humans' voice is heard in the sounds of Kobus, sometimes sad and deplorable. The scream of a swan, the howls of the wolves, the running of a horse, the blowing of the wind in the steppe, it sounds charming. The sacredness of the Kobus itself and its music, of course, indicates the most valuable cultural heritage, not only of Kazakhs, but also of mankind. Tatiana Privalova creates modern dolls in a vintage style. The main direction of her work is the creation of a boudoir doll. These are refined beauties with puffy lips, snooty noses and incredibly beautiful eyes. Now I make dolls only from baked material, plastic. Before I used to make them from self-hardening plastic and papier-mâché. There were a lot of techniques. Still, I like dolls that look as human as possible. And I like that, with the help of this material, I can express some emotions. Of course, dolls reflect the author's style, which we are working on. This does not happen in a year, not even in two years. Masters who have their own style may need even five years. The doll has to be movable, so the hands, feet, neck and head are made of a hard material and everything else is made of fabric that is stuffed with different fillers. The process of creating a new doll begins in different ways, sometimes with a sketch, sometimes just with some interesting picture seen in a cartoon. That is, once I wanted to make a doll similar to the one I saw. Just impossible to repeat it. But to make a doll in your own interpretation, which means without repeating nor plagiarizing, I create doll as I imagine it to be. I mean, it's different than what I saw, but it's my own. It happens that the doll maker also encounters the so-called fear of a blank piece of paper that writers sometimes suffer from. It happened once, I won't deny it. It probably happens to every person. I even wanted to give up on my hobby once, because I didn't know what it was for. 
Does someone need this? Now I know that it's necessary. That's what I need. Take a rest and return to this again. Do not force yourself. Do not start something. If you cannot do it now, you don't want to do it and you don't know if you need it. Then keep your work for later, for a week or two. And start it again as soon as you want to do it. That's all. Each doll has its own character, history and unique destiny. This, as an art object, is the strongest projection of a person and the opportunity to convey humans' emotions and experiences as reliably as possible through the doll, recording the smallest details and features of the character. France is the home of boudoir dolls. The first dolls appeared at the end of the 19th century and were very popular. Это кукла, которая украшались комнаты девушек, женщин, но не только комнаты. These dolls were used as decoration in the rooms of girls and women, but not only in the rooms, as later the girls began to take them out. У тебя нету такой куклы, то есть это. It was considered as a bad taste to not have such a doll. I mean, it's like a lady's accessory. So the bigger the boudoir doll, the better, the cooler it was. Это был хороший тон. In the middle of the 20th century, the boudoir doll continued to accompany the ladies for a while, but soon its popularity declined and it was happily forgotten. Access to the overseas market gave the dolls a second chance. They were brought from European holidays by brilliant film actresses and young millionaires. Today the doll is an object of art and collection. Sculptors, designers, decorators turn their attention to the doll. They discovered huge opportunities in this subject for the synthesis of art for the creation of a new plastic language. Now many people even build doll houses. They don't just bring a doll into the house. There are such kind of collectors. The boudoir doll is distinguished by its certain style, certain technique. The boudoir doll is just for home now. We do not take it out. We don't showcase it. It serves as an interior decoration. As for outfits, boudoir dolls are free to try on images of different styles and errors. There were writers and dolls and costumes of the peoples of the world and fans of Oriental Multicolor and Madame Pompadour in lace, just unusual images. You can take inspiration in different ways. Sometimes, well, I wanted to. I can even get up in the middle of the night and create something, because I wanted to, and it works. It works just in those moments when you've got something and you want to make a doll. Let's say the Han I made was Han Janibek. Having seen the film Kazakhanate, I was impressed by the image of two Hans. I've made only one yet. I was very impressed by their wisdom, strength and power. I wanted to make a doll, so I made it. And it was very easy for me. I created it as I saw it, that is, he was strong and powerful. I really wanted to convey the national style of the Han. I had to scroll through a lot of illustrations, see interesting national costumes, and I completely painted it by hand. The fabric was painted by hand too. After reading a lot of books, I made it. The embodiment of femininity, the embodiment of perfection and tempting mystery. This is all about the dolls that Tatiana creates. She speaks about the process of creating a doll as if she's telling about their birth story. For her, they are not toys, but something more. Every doll is the only one, it's unique. I mean, 
I'm not even going to repeat it all. I can't even do it if I wanted to. There is some definite author style, but they're all different, completely different dolls. I always make dolls in a good mood. It's impossible to create it if there is no good mood. It just doesn't work that way. You can make it. Through the doll, you can only convey the emotions that you feel while you are making it. Therefore, first of all, this is a good mood. Having watched a good film, you want to put all this into a doll. You put all the most positive and accordingly, the doll will make people feel the emotions that you put into it. The doll can smile, can cry, can just have calm emotions. For example, I love dolls with calm emotions. I don't like smiling dolls. They don't have to look heavy for the eye, maybe because I'm a calm person and my dolls look calm too. She's inspired by the endless steps of her native land. She understands Kazakh national traditions. She likes the sound of Kazakh language. She doesn't cease to be amazed by the culture of the people. Gradually falling in love with it, she began to study in details and create jewelry in the national style. The hero of our story is the master of creating wedding jewelry, Valentina Skiruk. I looked at the headdresses of the brides, the saukele, and I was so excited to make them. Do the same. At first, I was interested about the origin of the word saukele. I read a lot of books and found out there was a story out there. It used to be that the groom could find a bride in a nearby village. That is, it was necessary that she lived nearby. It took a long time to get there. And so he rode on his horse to the bride in the next village to pick her up. The road could take a week, even a month. He took the bride and went back home. The journey back home lasted even longer, since there was a dowry caravan with a bride, and there were often bandits in the steppe who could attack such caravans. And they often stole the saukele, because they were very expensive, with precious stones covered with gold or decorated with silver. So sometimes saukele itself could be worth almost a herd of horses. The question was always asked, Saukilema. It meant, will they come back safe and sound? And there were teenagers, shigits, near the village of the groom who were always looking for the caravan with the bride and the groom. And when they saw the caravan approaching, they would ride to the village and report the good news. Saukilede, Saukilede. This is where the name Saukile came from. Saukile is a high iconic headdress of the bride. It's worn before the birth of the first child, then it is treasured and passed on by inheritance. The best craftsmen took part in the production of the Saukile. The patterns on the headscarves and ribbons were embroidered with iris, that is, with thick, twisted, colorful threads. Gold, silver, and bronze pendants and overhead plagues of the saukile were made by jewelers who used casting, minting, stamping, and filigree techniques. The wedding headdress was decorated with silver and gold coins and precious stones. Безусловно, все камни носят свое значение и сакральность. Например, бирюза. Of course, all stones have certain meaning and sacredness. For example, turquoise is a more family stone. It symbolizes family peace, love and happiness. 
I like natural stones more. I like turquoise or jade. We use them and the pearls look very beautiful. It looks very gentle and elegant. Now at the moment I use embroidery technique. I like this technique and about six months ago I decided to use it specifically for the Saukile in order to see how it will look and how it will be combined. The effect was amazing. I didn't expect it myself. There are embroidered decorations, but in the Saukile they look unique. In my Saukile I use the ornaments Kazmoyan. This is a goose neck. Taban, Arash, Mius, Gul. Many girls choose this ornament, but pies Shogola. Shogola is a dawn. Shogola is a rasvet. Many brides love the Saukile with the ornament Bir Oyu because it is considered a family ornament. The upper branches are the wife and the lower branches are the husband. These are branches of the family tree. Each color has its own meaning. White color is more gentle, more modest. And I want some smooth lines. And fantasy already starts to play. And I want to create something really gentle, something I would say airy and light. Red color is emotional, it will suit bright, charismatic girls who know what they want, they know how to present themselves, they are confident, and then I want to make something brave. Mint color is tender and a calm color, it suits the ladies with refined taste, you can already play with colors here. Before the base used to be made of felt, now felt has been replaced by a felted cloth, and basically the frame of all of our saukile are based on a felted cloth. And then we sew it up, we make a shape and we start putting these patterns out, or we start putting on fabric. Then we start to make temporal decorations. They have to be beautiful, long. Someone wants them to fit into hair and braids, and if the girl wants loose hair, we just make temporal earrings. The master admits that she has no favorite works because literally she puts her soul into every product. As a rule, the bride has a picture of a perfect wedding in her head. My task is to recognize and create a dress that will fit into this picture, says Valentina. She must know clearly what she wants. If she knows the national patterns of her family, that is, each family has always had its own national patterns, then we can repeat them. We will show her the material, will help her to choose Salkile and make it how she wants it to be. Perfect, unique, one of a kind. But we will not be able to repeat the same saukile. It's always created individually, it is the same as the brides themselves. No doubt it's a girl who respects her traditions and pays tribute to her ancestors. She wants to have a wedding saukile with national ornaments, stones and with jewelry. I would say that combining ethnic with modern is more than relevant. A brides want to do everything according to the traditions of their people, but at the same time add a little modernity. It's like the past combined with the present, looking into the future.